I really wanted to uh, make the, the world a better place and, and I wanted to make our environment better. I think that we have some really massive problems and I believe in technology as a solution for that. Um, so I want to contribute to that to make sure that we uh, keep our society sustainable because what we're doing right now is obviously not sustainable. My name is Lars Engenent. I'm a professor in environmental biotechnology at the University of Tübingen. Paths to a better future. In this pilot plant near Copenhagen, his idea from the lab has become a reality to make excess solar or wind energy storable with the help of microorganisms. My field is called environmental biotechnology. We're taking microbes and trying to make a conversion, a biological conversion, from something that we may not like anymore to something that's useful. And we're using big bioreactors to do the job. In the pilot plant, wind power produces hydrogen through electrolysis. The hydrogen is fed to the microbes in the reactor. This is a great example of how current technology is married with something that's new, right? So. The reason we're here is the column here. That's a bioreactor full of microbes that make a biological conversion of hydrogen and CO2 into methane. From the CO2 of the wastewater biogas plant and hydrogen, the microorganisms produce methane. This results in a gas containing 97% methane, which is so pure that it can immediately be fed into the existing gas infrastructure. And methane is a useful biofuel. We can run buses on it, cars, we can cook on it, we can heat houses on it. According to Anginant, the future is sometimes only a technological bridge away. The reactor that we looked at uh, stands in between two different infrastructures that we already have. It couples two infrastructures. One is our electrical infrastructure with a lot of renewable energy these days. We have windmills, we have photovoltaic. And on the other side we have the natural gas grid, right? So we have a lot of renewable energy, especially on sunny, windy days. We actually make more electric power in Germany than we actually use. Um, so Normally we would have to then switch off the windmills and we don't want to do that. So we had too much. We put it into the natural gas grid and we can store that energy in a sense, but we can also transport it. So if the windmills are all in northern Germany, we can also put that methane gas into the natural gas grid and pump it through existing tubes that are already there, store it, pump it to southern Germany. Anginant is Dutch, however he has spent virtually his entire scientific life in the USA, recently at Cornell University. For him, the Humboldt professorship is a return to Europe. For his son Miles, it's a new start. We came as a family and I have a son as well. Um, and there were many different components of this and it's a long decision-making process. It was very hard, obviously, to make my son see that this is a good thing to do. Uh, he didn't want to move. However, for Anginant, Europe and primarily Germany is the place to be to implement his vision of a sustainable society. For my side of things uh, is being able to, to, to apply the technology, to have a society that's interesting in the technology, that, that um, thinks that this is a, a good thing, that wants to invest in that. And I think, in, and especially in Germany, obviously, where there is one of the only countries that really is thinking about an energy vendor, like a complete change of energy. It's a great time to be here. Um, I don't have to explain to you uh, what greenhouse gases and what their problems are. You, every 100% of the population agrees that this is a problem that we need to attack it. His fundamental research on microbes and the coexistence of microbial societies has many potential applications from energy supply through to medicine. We call this an anaerobic hood. Um, so we grow all organisms anaerobically. That means without oxygen. And it's the same conditions in our reactors. So only anaerobic gases are in there. Uh, and uh, that's why we do our work. Like Claudia obviously is doing her work. 
Anginant spent 22 years in the United States, conducting research, building a lab, and developing key technologies. So the nice thing about my lab is that you get people from all facets of science. Maybe you get a biochemist, a microbiologist, an engineer, an environmental engineer, all working together. And I really like that, that kind of diversity. Building something new at the University of Tübingen, exploring new horizons. This, says Anginant, can only be done together. His new lab will be here on the fifth floor. It is starting something bigger than just my own little lab. So I'm hoping in Tübingen here to work with people to, to make something bigger. Um, and, and that's something that I'm really looking forward to. And then moving into the new building, there is a lot of possibilities of actually making that happen. So not just thinking about your own little lab with the, with the, with the four walls, um, but actually thinking a little bit bigger than that. That's what I'm looking forward in, in my new place here. And I think with the Humboldt, I'm really positioned very well to do that.